So we just got the fresh jobs number from States Canada this morning and the news headline is telling you that the unemployment didn't change much in the month of July. So the unemployment rate is still 6.4%, exactly what we saw in the previous month. But as we look under the hood, crash beneath the surface, we realize the situation is actually getting worse. Okay, so National Bank has actually published a very good report dissecting the data, telling us exactly what's happening in the labor market. So let's dive into it. So according to uh, the jobs number published by Stats Canada this morning, we were expecting we were expecting 25,000 new jobs being added, but in fact we saw a 3,000 jobs decline in the month of July. Okay, at the same time, the population has grown by 125,000 people. But surprisingly, the labor force, the working age population actually declined by 11,000. So the labor force participation rate also declined quite a bit. That actually helped to make the overall unemployment number look better. Exactly same as 6.4% as we saw in the previous month. So ask yourself, how come the labor participation rate declines you know, suddenly? I don't know, could be it's summer, people are out the vacation, uh, or could be another reason. But if labor participation rate stayed the same, then this overall headline unemployment number could have easily been 6.7%, according to National Bank's own modeling. Okay, so what's happening here? So basically, if you look at the labor force aged between 15 and 24, that bracket is getting impacted big time. They are the ones, especially the men in that age range, are getting unemployed. So the unemployment rate for that age group of people, especially men, has actually gone by almost 4.2% in the last two years. Okay, that is a significant uptick uh, if we dissect the number. So you can see the graph shows the red line is basically for the people aged between 15 and 24. The, the trend is very clear, but if you but if you pay attention that how quickly it has turned upwards, okay, that is the key. So that means a lot of young Canadians and new immigrants are actually getting jobless much faster than the people in the other age bracket, let's say 24 to 55 and plus. And if you look at their if you look at the projections done by the National Bank's economist, it's going to get worse. Why? Because when we look at the GDP per capita, which has been declining for the past eight quarters, that means the Canadians as a whole are not being productive. So the amount of hours we are putting into the work, we're not producing enough output, which means at some point, the businesses will actually start cutting jobs. That's a simple you know, economics, guys. Okay, if you're not producing enough, then at some point the business will start cutting opex, cutting overhead. Okay, so that is the fear, and based upon that fear, the projection for the unemployment is going to go up. According to NBF, it's going to hit six six point six percent by the end of this year. So when you consider this, and when you consider the deteriorating housing market you consider the deteriorating construction uh, market. We are seeing the lowest uh, residential transactions. We are seeing the lowest amount of new permits being issued. So all of these things are actually pointing towards a slow grind in terms of the economic activity. And if you look at the amount of jobs that are being created overall, majority of them are actually created in the public sector. This graph actually shows you a stark difference between how big is the difference between the growth in the public sector versus private sector. Let me remind you something. The economic activity is mainly driven by the private sector. The private sector creates goods and services. Okay, They produce goods and services that actually produce new jobs, that actually contributes towards the economic activity. On the other hand, the public sector, it's mainly the consumption of, of, the, of the society. So they consume resources. They don't really produce a lot of goods and services. We can argue that, you know, in Canada, we have a lot of public sector companies who are, which are producing services. So it's a service-based industry. But when it comes to producing goods, 
you know you have to have private sector growth in the country and we can argue we are in recession or we are going into depression whatever you call the only way out for us is to grow the private sector the private sector has to grow they have to produce goods and services they have to increase the productivity they have to produce jobs in the economy if you're not seeing this which means we are actually looking at much worse the situation economically in canada going forward i could be wrong i hope i'm wrong but this is what i'm seeing and driving the conclusion from these uh, stats which is quite concerning for me which is quite concerning for me so anyway you let me know what you think about that put your comments down below and let me know how are you protecting your financial freedom your financial investment and take a look at the links in the description there's some free stuff available for you let me know if you want any help with regards to financial planning your kids education planning your retirement planning and i can connect you with one of my financial advisors and they can give you an honest advice until, until next time take care if you are an investor in the us in canada or in europe and you are considering investing into dubai real estate market this video is for you because we have a platform called stake which allows you to invest into the residential real estate market and start earning rental income right away without going through a lengthy documentation process or coming up with a heavy down payment stake is built upon this the concept of crowdfunding so it is democratizing the entire investment strategy and, and allows you to own a single unit of the entire investment portfolio so you don't have to own the entire property right? you can be part of the pool that can actually own a piece of property a piece of real estate so that allows you to start with as low as 2000 dirhams and you can slowly ramp up so as you start investing into it you can not only own a bit of bit of real estate but you also get a portion of the rental income on a monthly basis so it's a passive investment strategy diversifying your portfolio from traditional north american or european markets into dubai which is hustling and bustling and growing very fast and allows you to build your wealth over time so so don't delay there is a link down there in the description if you click on this it will give you free 200 dirhams in your account right away to start with and you can thank me later